Uh, go. Okay. We have uh, worked very hard to get this pelvis balance, balanced, and there is a separate uh, case study on this client, and it is called complex sacroiliac dysfunction, so you can find that described somewhere else. Our purpose right now is to talk about a side bending fixation of the coccyx. And if you recall that the, um, the I'm sorry, in the other case study, the right ischium was rotated externally. And that axis goes through the symphysis pubis and it goes through the uh, ASIS, PSIS. Uh, fairly in the middle of those two landmarks because you, you find symmetrical upper landmarks but when you come to the lower part you find that the left ischium, the right ischium was posterior. Now you would think if the ischium is posterior you would think there would be a shift in the uh, symphysis pubis. That's not the case. The symphysis pubis was symmetrical so that means that this ischium was rotated outward. It was also side bent laterally so it was shifted this way and you had the opposite pattern on this side. This side was rotated inward and it was adducted. All right. So we worked hard to correct that and now uh, you can see that she has nice movement. When we take up the slack we can move it medially. We can do the same on the other side. We can move it laterally. Uh, all that mobility is good but she still has a side bent coccyx. How do I know that? When I palpate her coccyx I come to the left and then I come to the right and she has a deeper sulcus on the right. So her coccyx is side bent to the left, narrowing that, that sulcus and increasing the, the left sulcus. Treatment is so easy for a side bent coccyx. Um, what you do is you capture right next to the coccyx by the uh, posterior um, iliac spine, okay? Easy to find because you find the bottom of the ischium and you come towards the ceiling then you go up about two inches and you'll be there. So here is her ischium and I'm coming up towards the ceiling. I go towards her ear. I'm going to go two and a half, three inches, come down. That's her ischial spine. So I come and I put one hand right there and I'm going to capture I'll be capturing part of the sacral tuberous ligament that has some slips that go on the coccyx, but I'm especially capturing the sacrospinous ligament. So it looks like this. There, another way to find it is there's the tailbone right there. So you take one hand and put it right to the outside of that coccyx there. And on the other one, you come and you take up the slack and you push on the right sacrospinous ligament. So you're shortening the right side, you're lengthening the left side. Image that her sacrum is much less mobile than is the coccyx in this direction. And so you simply just put your, get your hand placement, it's really on her lower buttock, like the lower third of her buttock, and you just, you know, take up the tension, take up the soft tissue tension, the angle of my force is about a 30 degree angle from the horizontal. It's a remarkably easy release and you need to just trust your hands. Just do it, you know. Figure out which way it's side bent. Just do it for two minutes and I think you'll be uh, pleasantly surprised <coughs> to see how that corrects. And of course the pelvic floor muscles would be asymmetrical. They would be tighter on the uh, side with a deeper sulcus because those side that muscle would be tensioned and it would be slackened on the opposite side. So that's how it's done. Very straightforward, very easy. And if you look at the articular anatomy of the coccyx, it makes perfect sense that side bending is a real possibility. Uh, I have a very expensive model made in Germany. This is one of the most expensive models and what disappoints is that the coccyx joint, where the coccyx joins the sacrum, for convenient purposes, it's just a straight cut. So you can demonstrate flexion extension, but you cannot really see the little articular facets, and that is a disappointment. So um, also, if you look through the anatomy books, and I was scouring um, this whole shelf 
and there is not a good view in the transverse plane of the sacrococcygeal joint. There is not a good sagittal view, a midline view looking medial to lateral. Excuse me, no wonder we have some difficulty understanding uh, how to treat the, the cox. Excuse me, I got the hiccups. So, this ends this portion of the film where we're talking about the coccyx. We can shut it off. Thank you.